If we'd been here earlier this week, that cliff would have been green. Suddenly, the road slipped down about seven feet at one go. This is what's left of our garden. Staggering, actually. <laughs> Landslides, a fact of life on an ever-evolving planet. At best, inconvenient. It's a shame as well because it's such a beautiful part of the country. Costly. It will, unfortunately, take weeks. At worst, deadly. A lot of people are just telling us to get back. Don't run down there. Don't go there. Don't go there. Well, obviously, I say it's my daughter under there. I'm going. So, if we can't stop them, what can we do? The answer, at the British Geological Survey, is plenty. This is the work of the landslide team at the BGS. Cutting edge technology for cutting edge research. Any kind of detailed measurement, this instrument is ideal. Learning more about how landslides happen. What we want to do when we're in the field is we want to record the details. And seasonal weather again, and you can see really why this is such a dynamic environment and why we get these events happening giving all of us more information. We help people, and where we have information, we make it available. Making all our lives safer. Studying the processes that, that lead to, to these geohazards so that we can try and avoid them in the future. Tynemouth, near Newcastle. In King Edward's Bay, the British Geological Survey is at work. How are we doing with the uh, tide? And facing a deadline. When the waves get to within about uh, 10 metres, we'll be uh, breaking camp, yes. <laughs> the team's here to carry out a 3D survey of the bay using a LiDAR scanner. From one location here, you're able to get a detailed model of this whole uh, cove. Measurements of the cliff, uh, for instance, bedding thickness, uh, fault direction, um, volumes and areas of, of uh, landslides and rockfalls and so on. And while preparations continue, Dr. Helen Reeves takes a closer look at what's brought her team to this particular beach. So we've come here to see this slump that happened in uh, New Year. Water gets down the back of the joints in the rocks and it causes it to tipple and fail. If you're walking underneath this, of, of course, the sad effect could be that you could get cap captured in it and sadly die. So people need to be careful when they come here. King Edward's Bay is the first of two scan locations today. The second takes the team to the next bay along. We're doing a second survey and that's to help us capture some additional information of the rockfall potential around the headland here just below Tymouth Priory uh, and that will able, enable us to assess whether there's any likely potential for any further rock fails along this section. <laughs> GPS locations of both scans are logged and when the two data sets are combined the benefits are clear. A 3D animation of Tynemouth puts the landslide risks on this part of the coast quite literally into perspective. And across the country, the team is gradually building a 3D imagery database of Britain's most active landslide sites. It helps us understand why the landslide processes are happening and understand where they might happen in the future. And that gives us uh, a baseline to then come back to and see how things change over time. And this is only one aspect 
of the work of a multidisciplinary team. We have a number of people with different skills and backgrounds. We have people that are experts in technology that do the uh, surveying that we're doing here today. We have people that are geomorphologists that look at the landscape and the shape and understand why the processes happen. And then we have some people that are classed as engineering geologists that look at the rocks and their strength and uh, their properties and understand why they fail and how. Back on the field trip, the work at Tynemouth is finished. So there's a chance to visit a nearby site which shows just how much a landslide can affect people and communities. Um, this is the line of the road here on my feet. Uh, six months ago, the line of the road was up here. This used to be the main route into the isolated Northumbrian town of Rothbury until the road was closed the previous Boxing Day. When the movement on the landslide happened, We've had this failure plane, a fracture, open up and we've had the land moved down to where we are now. And close by, a clear clue about the cause. If we moved round, you can see one of the potential reasons for this happening. You can see a, a small stream daylighting and water flowing. Over the past couple of years, the BGS has monitored a major increase in landslides across the country. An increase which has coincided with unusually wet weather. Something which, on this field trip, Helen hasn't needed to be told. You can see really why this is such a dynamic environment and why we get these events happening, like what happened in December. In fact, um, I've had from the landslide response team a report of a landslide uh, down in Devon uh, on the A358 today. So, uh, we've got unseasonal weather again, lots of rain, and the landslide is still happening. All of which has lent an extra urgency to the work. We had a five-fold increase last year in the number of landslides that we reported in the UK, and as a result from that, there's obviously more work in uh, capturing more of those events and the information on those. We need to monitor more locations to see how things are changing. Um, weather is a fact of climate change and population increases and in the way that we use land etc or whether it is just a one-off weather event that's happened uh, but that's something that we're doing at the moment in our research and it's very topical uh, and we're spending quite a bit of our time trying to understand that what we can try and do is to mark in a line to try and make a bit more sense of the site so at rothbury Geologist Claire Dashwood is logging the landslide on a background map for future use. Basically any information that we collect in the field, well we know this landslide is active, so if we came back again we could compare the lines that we've already drawn with new lines that we could draw, which, which can draw, and it just gives us um, a sense of scale of the site as well, of where the features are. And the public can do their bit too. We're trying to be very proactive, engage with people and ensure that there's ways that people can give us information through our website. We have a, a report a landslide section of our website, but also we do go out and talk to people. So when we know an event's happened and we pick it up on the social media through Twitter or through uh, the general media, we try to get in contact with uh, either the local authorities or the local landowners to try and gain more information. So it started off with these cracks here. Today, uh, that means like talking to like Sean Rennick. But the cracks started off small like that and grew and the, the road slipped away and is continuing to slip away. His family's home is at one end of the landslip. The land that provides their livelihood is at the other. For Sean, it's turned a 300-yard journey into a 26-mile round trip. Well, we've been here for two years uh, and this landslip really cuts the farm in half. I think everybody's shocked at the, to exactly how big the problem has become. Um, you know, it's, it's not just a, 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 a pothole. For us as scientists, of course, this is extremely fascinating, but it affects a lot of people's lives in the local area here. Just based on talking to people, um, that they are worried that, that in the summer people aren't going to come because the road's closed. For Sean, his family and the people of Rothbury, the long-term news is good. 
Funding's been granted to fix the road. These are indicative that movement is active and happening. For the rest of us, the work the BGS is doing here and across the country is also good news for the future. Providing the information and expertise we all need to be safer and better prepared in a changing world. The main objective really is to uh, help planners and local authorities and infrastructure companies to plan. We are starting to develop ways to communicate to the public. We're creating things like the Daily Hazard Assessment Report and contributing the landslide element to that. Uh, we're making more uh, data and information available on our website. So the information that we collect on a site like this can help us um, refine our maps as to where landslides might occur in the future. Coastal erosion of course is a problem all around uh, the British coast. We uh, are looking into a lot of diverse and dynamic changing environments. Route planning, uh, safety, um, things like footpaths, roads, rail. We're collecting as much information as uh, we can through our research and uh, hoping to improve our understanding of the landslides in the UK, which we can then help uh, improve uh, and mitigate risks from those.